Okay guys, this is going to be a quick uh, tutorial on animation. So there's a couple different ways that we can do animation in Cinema 4D. And what I'm hoping to convey is the similarities and differences between Cinema 4D's animation and After Effects. With After Effects, you can set up keyframes and then move forward in the timeline. And when you change an object, and move its position or its rotation, its scale, whatever you keyframed, it's going to automatically create another keyframe. Cinema 4D doesn't work that way in terms of the keyframes, at least not uh, in the traditional animation way. So I'm going to show you a couple of different methods for keyframe animation in Cinema 4D. What I have here is a scene with some three basic objects on a floor, and I'm going to animate them in a couple of different ways. So first, let's take a look at the cube here. So I get the cube, I'm going to select it, and here's my timeline. Now this timeline is a shortened version. It's, it's not the full timeline. In After Effects, we can see layers in the timeline for every single object. In this case, in Cinema 4D, this timeline, this one that we're looking at right now, is only concerned with the object that's currently selected. So it's abbreviated version of the timeline. Now, when we want to animate something inside of C4D, what we have to do is locate what we want to animate. And all these targets that you see here, these are like the stopwatches in After Effects. When we click on these, we can set up a keyframe. So for my cube, I want it to kind of bounce down and then bounce out of the frame. So I'm going to click once here to set up the keyframe. and move forward in the timeline just a bit. I'm going to adjust the position. I want to adjust the position of the cube. I'm going to push this down just a little bit. And then we have to click on this option again um, to uh, set another keyframe. And then moving forward, I want to get it off of the frame. So I'm going to go to frame 20. And then I'm going to increase this, pull it off of the floor, get it completely off the floor. And then again, I have to click this in order to create the keyframe. So then I have the full animation. You can play through the animation with the space bar. You can kind of see what that looks like. So that's manual keyframing. So that's one way to do it. The second way to do it is with this record active objects uh, keyframing uh, option down here. So this is dependent upon these controls to the right. So right now, position, scale, and rotation, and any parameters are on right now. You can turn these on or off for depending on what you want to record and what um, is going to be stored in the keyframes. So for the sphere, I'll select the sphere object now, and I'll turn this option on to record anything that's changing about the sphere. So you see that that creates a keyframe here. I'm going to move forward, and with the ball, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go up, then down, and then back up again. So at 10 frames, I'm just going to move this up slightly. And then again, notice that it didn't automatically create a keyframe, so I'm going to click the record active objects again, and then I'm going to move down the timeline. I already have a keyframe here. And then I'm going to have to click Record Active Objects again. And then finally at 60 seconds, I'm going to, this time I'll just move the Y value so that it's off. And then again, I'll have to click Record Active Objects to create the keyframe. The keyframes are these little blocks here. So if you want to move the keyframe, you can adjust just by dragging on the timeline. And then I'll go through and play this. You can kind of see what's going on here. After Effects also does its own automatic easing. That's, um, we'll see that in a little bit. But you can see that what I'm animating here, it's not a linear animation. It's eased. So it's a little bit of easing in and easing out at the beginning and the ends. Notice that the ball comes in, slows down, and then speeds up really fast towards the end. OK, so we've done manual animation. We've done this keyframe record uh, active objects animation. Now let's select the cone. 
and we'll take a look at another option. And this option is auto keying. You can turn the auto keying option on. When it's on, it's going to try to determine what's changed about the object that you're working with. So right now in this first frame, I'm not going to do anything, but I'm going to move forward, let's say to 15 frames, and I'm going to pull the cone up. And notice what that did. It automatically noticed there's a difference between the first keyframe and the second one, or the first instance and the second instance. So it automatically created uh, keyframes between those sections. I'm going to have to go back here and pull this down. Oops, don't want to do that. And I don't want this cone to go through the floor. So right about here. Let's see if that, yep, so that recorded that. And then from here, what I want to do, I already have this on. I'm going to move forward. And then I'm going to do a rotation animation. So right about here, I'm going to change this rotation value. And you'll see what happens. It creates a keyframe. And then I'm going to have to, it's like it's not recording what's happening like I want it to. And again, it has to do with the differences between the keyframes. Let's try 180. I'll move forward and I'll move with this option on. Let's try to do a different type of rotation. And yeah, there you go. So I've played through that. So a couple of different options for animating. Now where, like I mentioned before, all the animations are localized to the single object that you're currently working on. However, if you go to the window menu, downtown timeline, you have two timeline options. You have a timeline dope sheet and a timeline F curve. So timeline dope sheet shows me all of my layers. And this is similar to the After Effects timeline, except the keyframes show up not as uh, diamond shapes or how they appear in After Effects, they show up as these blocks. So you can select these blocks and move them around to change the timing of objects. You'll also notice here that they're the curve options. And these curve options have to do with the easing. So I have an ease, ease, ease in, ease out, and then there's some other options for manipulating these curves, these F curves. Well, the F curves are kind of like motion pass inside of After Effects. And they're buried right now. This is like just a layer, layered view of where all the keyframes are. But if I were to open these objects and get into each one of them, the cone was recording all the active keyframes um, so here's an example of an F curve. So I have this starting point and I have this ending point. And notice that I have a curve that I can manipulate. So if I want to, I can pull this in and that will affect the animation. And I mean, uh, that's affecting the animation of the cone. Let me just pull this over here so I can see the cone animation and how that affects that. The, the fact that I changed this path made that part of the animation much faster. So you can do things like that with other um, F curves. Like this one is very, very short, but this one, so that Y position, if I select these keyframes, I can choose one of the default easing values, or I can choose a different one to apply it to this animation, or you can just manually update, kind of like how you do in After Effects. And you can do a lot of experimentation to see how that works and what it looks like. So that is affecting the cube and the cube's disappearance on the y-axis. So it's actually bouncing. It's coming back and then leaving the screen, whereas before it was just leaving the screen wholesale. So timeline under the window menu and then you also have timeline F curve and that just shows you all the F curves for your objects and you can see for each one that you have selected there's 
all these different curves and go ahead. I'm using the middle mouse key to uh, adjust my view so that I can make adjustments to these curves. The more adjustments you make to your curves, the more interesting your animation is going to be. So that's one thing um, that you can do to make your animations a little better. So managing multiple objects moving around, you're going to need this timeline panel um, to do that. So spend some time making some animations using the different keyframe options. What's a little frustrating about Cinema 4D, especially if you're doing the, the first method that I showed you, is that you have to remember that you have to click on your keyframes and, uh, and you have to keep clicking on them in order to show where these objects are changing within the timeline. 